So this is the second teaching about the Ark of the Covenant. The topic of this section is dealing with the heart. And, and, and verses from First Chronicles that I read over and over and over became a rhema word in my spirit and motivated me to build a replica of the Ark of the Covenant of God that I keep in my house. And on the inside I have light bulbs that light up through uh, clear angels that are about uh, 18 inches tall. And I've also put some uh, red flickering bulbs on the inside so when I turn off the lights, it looks like there's heartbeats beating back and forth. And man, that is powerful to look at. So so here's the teaching about Ark and the Covenant dealing with the heart uh, about our, our core values and beliefs. So First Chronicles 17, verses 1 to 2, is David said in his house, He said to Nathan the prophet, Behold, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remains under tent curtains. So I'm in a better place than the Ark of the Covenant of God. And Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. So God puts the desires in our heart to do something to honor Him, And it was David's desire to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem after 40 years of it being abandoned with the Philistines as a place to honor God. Uh, Also in 1 Chronicles 17, starting in, in verse 20, David says, O Lord, there is none like you, nor is there any God beside you, according to all that our ears have heard. And what nation is like your people Israel? whom you went to redeem to himself as a people, making yourself a name by great and terrible things, by driving out nations from before your people, you redeemed us out of Egypt. Is that your story too? That's my story. I was a person who, even as a a licensed minister, I walked away from the faith for 18 years, and uh, Jesus is the, is the good shepherd. He left the 99 people who were doing well, who were going to church, who were reading their Bible, who were praying, who were tithing, who were sharing the gospel. And I didn't mean to, but I got stuck in a ditch. And the good shepherd left the 99 doing well after 18 years, and he found me. And he tugged on my shirt and said, Rick, I love you, I miss you, and I want you back. And he redeemed me from hurt feelings and and uh, restored me back into the faith and that's what that's what all of our testimony should be so you made your people Israel your own forever and you Lord you became my God and, and not only my God you became my savior and, and it's not only fire insurance to escape from hell uh, but he's also the shepherd so he does a personal inspection on every sheep every day and ministers to the need. So, so today the sheep might have flies buzzing around his nose, and and uh, and they lay larvae inside of the of the nose that causes them to itch, and and the and the sheep uh, rub their nose against rocks rocks to cause sores. And so and so he might minister anointing oil on the sheep's nose today, and and uh, and tomorrow there might be a hurt on the leg. Whatever the need is. The shepherd does a personal inspection on every sheep every day. So you, Lord, you became our God. Therefore now, Lord, let the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and and our house be established forever and do as you have said. And God will do when we obey. We love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul. We keep his commandments. We walk in his ways. We obey his voice. And then he will multiply us, and then he will bless us. But we got to do our part first, and that's in Deuteronomy 30. Let it be established, and let your name, let the character that that name denotes be magnified forever. Saying, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, is Israel's God, and you're my God, and you're the God of my family. You said in Acts, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved, you and your household. So let the house of David, let the house of Rick, your servant, 
be established before you. For you, O oh my God, you have told me that you will build me a house of blessed posterity that will affect my children and my grandchildren for generations. And because you said that you would you would guide me and you would open a door that no man can close and you close a door that no man can open therefore me your servant and david have found courage and confidence to pray before you jeremiah 29:11 people say it all the time but they forget about verses 12 and 13 God said, I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. And verse 12 says, because we know that he has a plan for us, then we have the confidence to pray to him, and he will answer us. And then verse 13, people don't talk about, it says, uh, and we will seek him, and we will find him when we search for him with all of our hearts. So it's a package deal, uh, Jeremiah 29, verses uh, 11 to 13 so thank you father that because you answer my prayer because you are my protector my healer the god in whom i take refuge you are my shield you're the horn of my salvation i as your servant as as the son a son of the living god i have courage and confidence to pray before you and and thank you that you will listen and answer my prayers and now lord you are god and you have promised this good thing to me, your servant. Therefore, may it please you to bless the house, the posterity of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For what you bless, O Lord, is blessed forever. That's worth repeating again, too. Because God's blessing never goes away. It never loses its power like the blood of Jesus. It never loses its power. If he has blessed us, he will bless us. And our job is to listen, to obey, to do what he says promptly and quickly and efficiently, regardless of whether we understand. Therefore, may it please you to bless the house the posterity of your servant, that it may continue before you forever, for what you bless, O Lord, is blessed forever. That's First Chronicles 17.27. It's worth writing down on your refrigerator and looking at it every day. So in First Chronicles 22, David says, uh, here's where we need to build the house of God. So he prepared a place and he prepared all kinds of material, uh, wood and gold and silver and iron. And, and uh, so he prepared uh, the place. In First Chronicles 22, verse 5, David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced and, and some... Uh, think that he was like 12 to 15 years old when he became king but God was the one who selected Solomon David's uh, fourth child and the house that is to be built for the Lord it must be exceedingly magnificent a fame and glory throughout all of the lands and because the house of God must be exceedingly magnificent to fame and glory I will therefore make preparations for it so David prepared abundantly before his death, and, and that resonated with me because for 30 years I was a supply officer, supply person, got materials, made sure that they were on hand. You know, a, a, a $20 million F-16 uh, is just a paperweight if it doesn't have the right uh, fifty-nine cent gasket on the plane at the flight line at the time that it needs it. Uh, verse 6, then, then David called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. What are we teaching our kids about how to honor God and listen to his voice? David said to Solomon, my son, it was in my heart to build a house for the name and the symbol of the presence of the Lord my God. Do you have a quiet devotion time, a place every day where you meet with God first thing in the morning, a place where his name and his presence are honored and welcome? But the word of the Lord came to me saying, you have shed much blood and you have waged great wars and you shall not build a house to my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight even though david prayed to god should i pursue the philistines yes will you deliver them in my hand yes but because he had shed blood uh god chose his son and god said behold a son 
shall be born to you, he shall be a man of peace. I pray that my son will be a man of peace and, and have a relationship with the Prince of Peace. And I will give your son rest from all of his enemies round about. Boy, that's worth praying for. And his name shall be Solomon, peaceable. And I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. And I, I pray for my son to have peace and quiet, uh, to not have frustrations. And Solomon shall build a house for my name and for the symbol of my presence. And Solomon shall be my son and I will be his father. And I will establish his royal throne over Israel forever. And now, my son, the Lord be with you and prosper in you and building the house of the Lord your God, as he has said, spoken concerning you. Only may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding, not only to, to David, not only to his son, but to me, to my son. Uh, indeed, ask for wisdom and understanding. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandments. Uh, believe that's uh, Psalm 111, verse 10. As you are part in, uh, put in charge of Israel, that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper. If you are careful to keep and fulfill the statutes and ordinances which the Lord charged Moses concerning Israel. That's about daily devotion time, getting in the word, praying the verses out loud. Be strong and courageous. Dread not, fear not, do not be dismayed. In my affliction, my trouble, I provided for the house of the Lord. He provided... Uh, in, in the uh, Dakes uh, Study Bible, he gave the equivalent of $4.8 uh, trillion, a billion dollars, $4.8 billion uh, out of the treasury. And he provided the timber and the stone. You must add to them. You have workmen in abundance, hewers, workers of stone and timber, all kinds of craftsmen without number, skillful in doing every kind of work, just like the body of Christ. Uh, the, the people who work with gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, all have different skills. But as the body of Christ, we all do our part and the whole body uh, is, is benefited. So arise and be doing, the Lord be with you. Even though it, it talks about be strong and courageous here, we're also going to hear that in the next teaching. Uh, but I thought it was important to keep all of those verses in uh, chapter 22 together. Here is the last one for for this section on on issues of the heart in verse seventeen first uh, chronicles twenty two seventeen David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon and his son, saying, "Is not the Lord your God with you? Yes, he is. Has he not given you peace on every side? Yes, you have. Thank you, master." You have given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and all this people. Here's why this is this section is on the heart. This is worth remembering. This is rich. Let this be a rhema word for you as you meditate on it. Now set your mind and heart. Do it uh, a firm quality decision from which there's no retreat. You set your mind, you set your heart to seek, to inquire of, and require as your vital necessity the Lord your God. Uh, rise and build the sanctuary to, to build the body of Christ, of the Lord God, so that the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God may be brought into the house that's built into the name and the renown of the Lord. That's worth getting the Amplified Bible just for that uh, verse there. And so I'm going to repeat it. It's worth repeating. And, and sometimes uh, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying. So again he said and said the same thing. And so I'm going to follow Jesus' example. I'm going to say the same thing. The last verse for this section on the heart. This is an issue of the heart. We don't, we don't go to church out of repeti uh, repetition uh, to be seen, to, to, to have a social connection with people. We go there to worship the Lord God. And, and things happen at the altar that don't happen anywhere else. And you can't get that from just uh, watching a church service on TV. It's like watching a football game and being there in person. It's a totally different atmosphere. So the verse again, First Chronicles 
22 verse 19 now set your heart and mind to seek to inquire of and requires your vital necessity the Lord your God arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that the ark of the covenant of the Lord that the holy vessels of God may be brought into the house that's built into the name and the renown of the Lord so this completes the second teaching on Ark of the Covenant.